From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Capitan Garcia Ramulio of the Panama Federal Police. Good. Your sergeant said he could locate you in a matter of minutes. I am never lost from contact, senor. You have uh, talked with the beautiful tourista, no? I have talked with her, yes, and I ended up getting socked in the jaw. These Americano women are so very much athletics. No, she didn't hit me. It was a guy who was hiding out in a closet. Ah, I see. I understand, senor. Somehow I doubt it. Look, Garcia, it was the man I came down here to question her about. I'm sure of it. But, senor, you have to tell me... Yeah, I know. Apparently his death was faked. I think he's here, hiding out somewhere in Panama City. Do you think you can find him? When my men make the search, senor, even a little dog could not escape. Then go to it. His name is Ed Morgan, but he may be using another one. The charge is embezzlement. You know his description, senor? I ought to. He's been one of my best friends for years. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Panama, to the Home Office, Eternity Mutual Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the confidential matter. Expense account continued. Item 14, $12.85, telegram to Hartford, advising them that the case had turned in a completely new direction. I'd taken the case with the idea of digging up a man's past, a man who had been one of my best friends. Of finding out why, after a life of complete honesty and loyalty to his company, he had suddenly gone wrong and embezzled $80,000. I'd found out that part of the why was probably a lovely young widow named Nikki Barrett. But I'd found out more. The man we thought dead, who'd supposedly drowned when his car went off a cliff into the Pacific Ocean, was still alive. So now it was a matter of filing charges, requesting extradition for Panama, and of course capturing the fugitive. That I left to Captain Garcia for the moment and went to bed. When I came down to breakfast the next morning, I still hadn't heard back from Garcia. But I did get a return engagement from my little playmate of the night before. Good morning, Johnny. Hmm? Oh, well. Good morning, Mrs. Barrett. I came into town early especially to see you. Why? A deep concern as to whether I survived that sock in the jaw? No. No concern, really. I imagine you have a pretty tough jaw. Do you mind if I sit down? If you promise not to double up your fist. I can explain that, Johnny. With all night to think about it? Yeah, I bet you can. How about some breakfast? I don't really... They got a special this morning, fried fish and papaya. Oof. Tastes even worse than it sounds. No, I'll just have some coffee. That we already have. Sugar, cream? Just black. Thank you. All right, you're on. Spin it off. Well... I'll admit it was silly to claim I was the one who hit you last night. Of course it was silly. I know who hit me. You don't. It was Ed Morgan. He was hiding in the closet in your hotel room. You're wrong, Johnny. It, you don't mind if I call you Johnny, do you? I mean, you and Ed were such close friends. I feel I almost know you. You could be wrong, Mrs. Barrett. I used to think I knew Ed until he met you and decided to tap the till for 80 grand. All right, call me Johnny if it gives you more confidence in your act. It's not an act. Okay, if you didn't hit me and Ed didn't, then who was it? Let's just say it was a friend. <laughs> he wasn't very friendly to me. He misunderstood you coming there. He shouldn't have been there himself. He's, well, he's married. and Not that I knew it, though, until last night. <laughs> That's not a bad attempt, Mrs. Barrett, at a snow job. But I still don't buy it. Better drink your coffee. Johnny... Ed was drowned in San Francisco when his car ran off into the ocean. He's dead. How can he be dead in San Francisco and still be tearing up cigarettes in Panama? I did that. You don't even smoke. But the man who was there last night does. And I tore the cigarettes in that peculiar way. I picked up the habit from Ed. I just did it absentmindedly, I guess. Well, this gets better as it goes along. Well, I'm not lying. It's true. No, I mean this fish and papaya. I guess you just have to get used to the mixture. Oh, please, Johnny. You're not even touching your coffee. If I drink it, will you please listen to me? I am listening to you. I just don't believe you. 
Look, we all make mistakes. Last night, you made a guess. You thought that was Ed, but you were wrong. So why be stubborn about it and cause a lot of unnecessary trouble? Let's forget it and be friends. Can't afford it, sweetie. I haven't got that kind of money. Do you think I sell my friendship? It cost Ed $80,000 of the company's money. No. How much of that did you get? Half of it? No. More than half of it? No, I don't know what you're talking about. How much does he have left Stop now? Stop it! Stop saying such things. All right. Can't you understand? Once and for all, Ed isn't here. Nor anywhere else. He's dead. No, he isn't. But I wish to heaven he were. What do you mean? Just that. But he was your friend. That's right. He was my friend. When I heard about his accident, heard he'd been killed, it hit hard. It hurt plenty. And I guess it hurt even more when I learned he'd been stealing from the company. Johnny. So I took the job of digging into the mess and trying to find some answers. I didn't want the job, didn't want any part of it, but I took it anyway. Somebody had to do it. And he had been my friend once. And then I find out he's still alive. No, so you Johnny, see what it means? He's... Now I've got to catch him and take him back to stand trial. And that's going to be even tougher than facing his death and the fact he was a crook. If Ed were alive, you'd take him back? Help send him to prison like any other common criminal? That's what he is, isn't he? But he was your friend. Oh, skip it. You wouldn't understand. I might, if you'd let me try. The only thing you're trying to do, Mrs. Barrett, is to con me into thinking I might possibly be wrong. Thinking maybe it was somebody else in your room last night. I told the you. The idea is to throw me off balance just long enough so the two of you can make a run for it. Nice try, only it won't work, so knock it off. Ed and I were going to be married, Johnny. And the shock of his death... I said skip it. Ed used to talk about you. He told me you were this way. Hard and cold and ruthless. Then he has no excuse. He knew what to expect. But I didn't believe it. I didn't think anyone could be a... senor. Oh, good morning. I don't believe you've met my companion. I have not been so fortunate, senor. This is Captain Garcia of the Panama Police, Mrs. Barrett. Hello. I'm greatly honored, senora. Might be a good idea to take a careful look at her, Garcia. You will probably be arresting her in the next day or so as an accomplice to fraud. Let us hope such regrettable necessity is not happening. Thank you, Captain. I'm sure it won't. Mr. Dollar has a rather boorish sense of humor. I comprehend, senora. Uh, Mr. Dollar, it is possible, perhaps, that uh, I speak a little with you? Yeah, sure. I imagine Mrs. Barrett will be happy to excuse me at this point. Hasta la vista, senora. Remember, Johnny. He was your friend. I did not wish to mention this matter before the senora. Oh? I think it's better she's not here. It. Here what? Have you turned up something? You see, senora. I have to tell you, not even the little dog can hide from Garcia. So? We have located this man, Ed Morgan. I got into the police car with Captain Garcia, and we drove out of town and followed the shoreline for about six miles. Then we pulled up near a cluster of rickety wharves built around the edge of a tiny inlet. There were numerous native fishing boats tied against the pilings, but no village, no shacks, nor any other sign of a habitation. Garcia cut the water and lit a cigarette. Pues aquí estamos. Here we are, senor. Here? He's hiding out here? Si, senor. He slept on one of the little fishing boats which are tied to the wharf. The number three one there, which is blue painted, you see? Yeah, I see it. Well, a place like this would be safer than a hotel. You're pretty sure it's him. Pues, Miguel Ronesto, who is on the boat, said this man come out here one month ago. He paid Miguel much money just to live on the boat, tie up at shore. And he is like you described, senor. I think so is him. All right. I'll go on board and talk to him. And uh, I think I'd better go along, Garcia. Whatever you wish, senor, I wait for you here. Okay. Ed? Ed Morgan! Ed? I know you're here, so you might as well answer. Cabin's unlocked. Come on down. Been a long time, man. Yeah, it has. Sorry the place is so littered up. Temporary quarters, you understand. Sit down. Thanks. Johnny, why did it have to be you? 
It had to be somebody, Ed, sooner or later. You should have known that. But not you. How'd you get onto me? I traced Mrs. Barrett down here. I thought you were dead until last night. She wasn't supposed to show here for six months. The last week here she was. Couldn't wait. Why did you do it, Ed? You wouldn't understand. You've always had dames crazy about you without lifting a hand. But not me. This face always stopped him. Sure, I used to laugh about it, but... Well, you just wouldn't understand. And this woman was different, is that it? Nikki fell as hard as I did. I didn't know women like her even existed. She's for me all the way. Is she worth the price tag? $80,000? Cut it, Johnny. It's not that way. It's just that Nikki had always lived well, and I had to live that way, too, in order to be around her. I got in further and further, and finally I was in too deep to pull out. Did she know you were stealing from the company? Not at first. The blame's all mine, Johnny, not hers. You picked your own apple, is that it? Call it that. And I didn't spend all that money. We decided to get out of the country, start a new life together. I figured I'd need that much. And Nikki agreed to that plan? Sure. That's why she's here. She sold out and came on down. Only she didn't, Ed. She still has her apartment in San Francisco. You're wrong, Johnny. She sold her furniture, her clothes, everything. The stuff is all there, Ed. I saw it. You're lying, Johnny. She pulled stakes. She told me. Okay, she told you. I guess you know why I'm here. I know why you think you're here. Hold it, Johnny. Don't move. I've had this gun on you since you came on board. I know you have. But I wonder if you'd really use it. Don't try to find out. And don't tell me I'm in a spot. I know that. But I'm going on as far as I can. And if I have to kill to do it, then I'll kill. Maybe I could have stopped him. Maybe he wouldn't have fired, I don't know. And for one reason or another, I didn't feel much like finding out. I let him go. He backed out of the cabin hatch and bolted it on the outside. I heard him cross the deck and run along the wharf. And I waited for Garcia to call out to challenge him. The only sound was a car motor starting up and speeding away. Then I heard somebody come running down the wharf. Senor Dollar! Get the door open, Garcia. Where is he? What happened? He take the car, senor. He's me to blame. I, I am not alert. Before I know it, Never he's... mind. Where's the nearest telephone? Two miles, senor. Two miles? How do we get there? But how else, senor? We walk. Now, here is our star to tell you about tomorrow's final episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, fate plays a devil's tune, collects a payment long overdue, and the music ends on a scream. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Hugh Brundage speaking. <laughs>